number 10, we have the Saber Tooth Tiger. Everyone knows this guy. I mean, he's one of the main characters in the Ice Age movies. By far, one of the most famous extinct animals ever. And they weren't something you want your dog to play around with in the backyard unless you want to traumatize yourself. These things were big, with the larger ones being around 8 feet long and clocking in at 660 pounds. Holy crap. Could you imagine this thing chasing you down? You would be done for. You got no chance. And those amazing fangs that pop out of their head, they're around 7 to 12 inches long long. Oh my god. This thing would bite down on you and pierce you like a stuffed pig. There would be blood everywhere. Literally the difference in power between you and a saber toothed tiger is like you versus a very cute duck. Even after saying all that, I think if these things were still alive, Mike Tyson would own one and the tiger would understand Mike Tyson as the alpha. Because that's just Mike Tyson. That's the way it is. Next up on number 9 now, we have Phobiromis patasoni. This was a huge rat. Some scientists have even called it ratzilla. Technically it wasn't a rat. but if you're scared of them, I bet you'd be scared of this. They reached a whopping 9.8 feet long. Their tails alone could reach 4.9 feet. They had the weight to go with it too, often reaching over 1,500 pounds. Like most rodents, they had big incisor teeth. In the case of Ratzilla though, their incisor teeth were about a foot long. It's a good job they were herbivores and used those teeth for plant life. However, I don't think that knowledge would do much to calm people if they were suddenly seen running around the streets at night. Coming at number 8 now, we have the tiger. Titanoboa. Everyone with a phobia of snakes, please look away now. This was a massive snake, thought to actually be the largest that's ever lived. Its name literally means Titanic Boa. It lived around 60 million years ago. The largest individuals reached up to 42 feet in length and weighed over 2,500 pounds. That's well over a ton for a snake. It could grow this big because the Earth's climate was a lot warmer back then. As the climate began to cool over the next few million years, only smaller snakes could survive and snakes like the Titanoboa began to disappear. Probably a good thing for us humans because we would not want to be running around worrying about snakes that weigh as much as your average rhino. No thanks. Next up at number 7 now we have Dungliosteus. This is a fish that lived about 370 million years ago during the late Devonian period. These things were big, growing up to 30 feet in length and weighing over a ton. What's most scary about them is their bite. This fish could bite down on its prey with a force of some 6,000 newtons. That might not mean anything to you until I say that's almost about four times the bite strength of a polar bear. This fish could bite your arm clean off you, including the bone. Its jaws were so efficient they could hinge them open and snap them shut in a matter of milliseconds. If we were to bring this species back to life, people might worry about them more than sharks. At number 6 now we have the Mega Piranha. Unlike a lot of scientific names on this list, the Mega Piranha has a kind of obvious one. It was a giant piranha fish that lived about 10 million years ago. They grew to around 3 feet long and unlike modern piranhas, they had not one but two separate rows of teeth. Scientists aren't even sure how hard they could bite, but some estimates go as high as 4,749 newtons. If that's the case, they would bite more than twice as hard as a hippo. Neither of those sounds fun, but one definitely sounds worse. Moving on to number 5 now, we have Gigantopithecus. In many ways, this creature is what we'd call Bigfoot. It lived between 9 million to 100,000 years ago in Asia and was the largest ape on Earth. They stood about 10 feet tall and their diets were mostly vegetarian. When I say stand, I mean stand in the way gorillas and chimpanzees do. It's thought they walked on all fours. However, a small number of scientists do think they walked on two legs like humans. Either way, with a 12 foot arm span, you'd be best to stay clear of this giant and unpredictable ape. Next up at number 4 now we have Helicoprion. This was a shark like creature that lived some 290 million years ago during the early Permian era. We've seen some very weird creatures on the list so far, but this might just beat them all. The Helicoprion is famous for his spirally arranged clusters of teeth known as tooth walls. This bizarre set of teeth would have reached about 24 inches in length. Moving on to number 3 now, we have the short faced bear. The scientific name for these is the Arctodus. They first appeared in the fossil record 1.8 million years ago and seem to survive all the way up until just 11,000 years ago. So, a pretty close call for us modern humans. One specimen found weighed 2,000. 110 pounds. 
They stood up to 12 feet tall on their hind legs, about twice the height of the average human male. Their vertical arm reach extended up to a further 14 feet. I could keep giving you guys stats on just how monstrous these bears were. Between those ones and the pictures you're seeing now, I think you get the idea. They were 50% larger than the biggest polar bears in recorded history. Scientists estimate they needed a whopping 35 pounds of meat a day just to survive. If we brought them back from extinction, I'm sure they wouldn't mind human meat being a part of that. Next up at number two now, we have the Meganura. Dragonflies are nice, right? They're pretty cool looking creatures you find fluttering around ponds and rivers. They're a little bit freaky if they land on you, but you know, hey, at least they're small. Not Meganura though. This massive dragonfly-like creature lived about 300 million years ago during a Carboniferous period. Its wingspan could reach up to 30 inches, making this thing about the size of a six-month-old baby. Don't ask me why I'm using a baby as a reference, it's just the best comparison I could find. They reach this size because insects need more oxygen the bigger they are. Back then, the oxygen levels in the atmosphere were higher than the current 20% we have today. This allowed insects, including Meganura, to grow insanely big. You wouldn't need your hand to bat this thing away, more like a baseball bat. And finally at number one now, we have Dinosuchus. This is an extinct relation of the modern alligator that lived some 80 to 73 million years ago. That means it was alive at the same time as T. rex. In fact, it's thought these two actually fought it out back then. They are thought to have been up to 33 feet in length and have weighed as much as five tons. It looks like the T. rex might not have been much of a match for this oversized alligator. There have actually been T. rex fossils found with massive Dinosuchus bites found in them. Perhaps they were just defending their territories from T-Rexes, or perhaps they saw them as food. Either way, they definitely were not scared of T-Rexes, and so they definitely wouldn't be scared of us. I get the feeling if we brought them back from extinction, that might be where we're heading next. Starting off at number 10 now, we have Spinosaurus. Let me start by asking you guys a question. What's the largest carnivorous dinosaur of all time? Surely it's the T-Rex, right? They've always been portrayed as the top dogs. Their name literally translates to Tyrant Lizard King. I was surprised to learn that it's actually the Spinosaurus, perhaps the largest known carnivorous dinosaur of all time. It lived about 100 million years ago. Estimates put the length of these things about 60 feet while weighing as much as 23 tons. That's three and a half times as much as the T-Rex. If its sheer size wasn't scary enough, you might have guessed from its name that it also had very big spines. They fanned out across its back and formed what is usually referred to as its sail. What scientists aren't sure about is if the spines were covered in fat and looked kind of like a huge camel pump thing. A camel the size of a small building. Spinosaurus is a predator, but one that hunts in water. It's Ichthyophagus, a fish eater. At number nine, we have the T-Rex. Okay, we got another classic. We're going classic after classic for this list. I think dinosaurs count as animals. I'm not sure what the science is on that, but I also don't care, I'm putting it on the list. And I barely need to tell you anything about the T-Rex. We all know what this guy is. And we know that if they were still around, running around, stepping on Subarus, traffic would be insane. They would probably ruin all our lives. The T-Rex weighed around 15,000 kilograms. That's over 30,000 pounds. And it was around six meters tall and 12 meters long. The skull alone was massive. This thing's dome was five feet long. It was bigger than that guy who got pissed off in that New York bakery. Go ahead and attack me, big dog. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just wanted bagels. I'm never getting tired of that clip. I'm gonna put in so many videos. I want you guys to know that. Also, this thing could eat 500 pounds of meat in a single bite. Yeah, I know they look cool, and in theory, Jurassic Park would be fun, but I'm happy that this massive monster is bones now. At number eight, we have Caprosuchus. Okay, so now we're getting into the weird stuff. The Caprosuchus was basically a giant alligator with long legs. So you know how alligators and crocodiles are scary, but not really scary because they're kind of slow and lumbering? Well, imagine if you slapped some Usain Bolt legs on the bad boy and made them way bigger. Well, now you got a croc that can zip around like an Uber Eats guy trying to put his kids through college. And its jaw is big enough to swallow up their student debt. And legend says they were also wonderful dancers. At number seven, we have Gigantopithecus. Also known as Big 
monkey man among scientists, this thing is basically Bigfoot. It's related to orangutans, so picture a ginger Bigfoot that is 3 meters tall and has a right hook that can cave your head in. These dudes were insanely strong. They had the relative strength to chimps. Meaning, you know how strong a chimp is for how small it is. Well, imagine a chimp that was 9 feet tall and weighed 1200 pounds and had the strength to match. It could probably bench press 2 Honda Civics and the entire unmarked VHS collection in R. Kelly's house. That's a lot of weight. Yo, kill me with this. It's unknown what made this guy disappear, but a lot of people think it's because they started getting hunted by humans. We might have been hunting them for food, or it might have been just foresight on the side of our ancestors. If we let these guys evolve alongside with us, they would be dominating all the sports right now. At number six, we have Gorgonops. So I'm just learning this now, but they were terrifying creatures even before the dinosaurs. I'm not surprised I didn't know this, I'm not a very bright person. The only things I really know about are video games and how to make very nice pancakes. Those are my only two skills. Beyond that, I'm useless. But this thing was king of the world way before the dinos were even a thing. Gorgonops holds the title for having one of the best names of all time and being one of the most dominant apex predators ever. It was kicking around 260 million years ago. It kind of looks like a cross between a bear and a lion and a crocodile, and it had massive teeth that it would use to destroy all its prey. Nothing stood a chance against Gorgonops. Y'all afraid of sharks? Well, you're gonna love this next one. At the number five spot, we got Megalodon. This is one of the biggest sharks that we know ever existed. It's massive, and its heart was powered by orphan blood. These things were huge, dude. Some Megalodons would grow up to 60 feet long. That's bigger than the Hollywood sign. If you're caught in open water with this thing, it would be like popping a juicy zit on your back. You'd explode into blood in no time. The crazy thing about this one is that there are Megalodon truthers out there that think this thing still exists. They believe hidden away in the deep somewhere are megalodons that roam waiting to strike back and ruin everyone's summer vacation. Think about that next time you're going out for a nice little swim. At number four, we have Pomonoscorpius. Okay, this one by far is one of the grossest ones we've had on the list so far. This thing is a scorpion, except it was three feet long. Ugh. Yeah, no thanks, dude. It's disgusting. And it has all the regular things that scorpions have. Big ass claws, eight gross legs, a bunch of nasty eyes, a tail that's full of venom that can kill you in a very painful fashion. Yeah, this one's a big no thank you for me. It would take a lot more than a can of raid to kill one of these things. Could you imagine one of these things working its way into your home? I wouldn't know if I'm supposed to kill it or adopt it. It's basically like a super gross dog. I feel like everyone watching this video is like, oh, those things would have been gross. And everyone in Australia is like, oh, gimbal gambles, we have those things every winter. And number three, we have the Titanoboa, a big old snaky thing that's basically a giant boa constrictor, like massive, like 60 feet long, could swallow a car whole and this thing still operates like a regular boa it would crush its prey to death what's the psi on this thing dude it would have been crazy it probably has enough grip strength to turn a piece of coal into a diamond and then crush that diamond into dust it was super jacked like a giant flexible bicep waiting to squish things into a nice bite-sized package this guy weighed around 2,000 pounds bro 2,000 if you're afraid of snakes you probably already turned this video off but you could imagine getting crushed by this thing you wouldn't stand a chance your head would fly off like when you put Mentos in a Diet Coke. <laughs> At number two, we have a Theropleura. Yeah, we're keeping it gross with some more bugs. A Theropleura is a 10 foot long centipede that might have been too big and gross to have many predators. Imagine a centipede that is so big, no one messes with it. It roams around freely with no laws, doing whatever it wants, not afraid of anything. That sounds like a nightmare come to life. These things have massive pincers for eating and could easily slice through your flesh. If it was a battle between one of these big, multi-legged freaks and John Bones Jones, I might take the bug. I'm just glad I live in a time where only house centipedes are a few inches long. If I came home to one of these things, I would probably have to put it on the lease. At number one, we have terror birds. So picture an ostrich, but bigger, which is kind of the theme of the whole list. Everything used to be bigger back then. And then we came around and everyone had to make room. Yeah, that's the kind of things we are. Humans, we take up space. So these things are like an ostrich, but they're nine feet tall and they have razor sharp claws on their feet that they would use to easily slice into their prey's flesh. These terror birds would weigh around 340 pounds. It's a big ass bird, dude and they could move at around 30 miles per hour. And to top it all off, they were carnivores. That's great. 
thought that they would commonly prey on prehistoric versions of horses. These dudes would slash Seabiscuit's throat in a second and not even think twice about it. I'm not surprised at all that these things existed. We all know how mean a goose is. For sure its ancestors were these monstrosities running around killing everything. That's what every goose wishes it could do today. Starting off at number 10 now we have the Megalodon. Megalodon was the biggest shark that ever lived. They went extinct about 2.6 million years ago. Scientists think they could have grown to an insane 60 feet in length. That's about 3 times as long as the largest great white shark ever found. Here's how big they are. Before modern science identified them as a prehistoric species of shark, people used to think the Megalodon teeth they'd found were actually dragon tongues. Others said they belonged to giant serpents or even that they were rocks that had fallen from the moon. Just think how big and scary you'd have to be for people to think that your teeth belong to dragons or outer space. It used to feed on prehistoric whales and unlike modern sharks which go for the soft underbelly of their prey, Megalodon just went for the whole thing. They would bite down on the whales chest with some 41,000 pounds of force, the strongest ever recorded and simply crush the whales chest cavity and organs. They didn't stand a chance and unless you're an even bigger whale watching this video you probably wouldn't either. Coming at number 9 now we have the giant crocodile. That's right, if you thought the best way to make a crocodile even more scary was to give it more teeth are wrong. You just make them way bigger and they really did exist. The scientific name for this animal is Sarcosuchus. They lived around 112 million years ago during the early Cretaceous period in what is now Africa and South America. These things weighed about 8 tons and grew up to 40 feet in length. It's almost twice as long as the biggest living crocodiles today. The giant crocodile would probably laugh at the crocodiles we have today, then it would eat them, then it would eat us, then it would laugh. Luckily they died out over a hundred million years ago. Next up at number 8 now we have the walking worm. The scientific name for this one is Hallucigenia fortis. It was part of a family of walking worms. They looked like worms, they acted like worms, but they had legs, actual little legs. Get this, scientists discovered their fossils in Canada and China. They were so weirded out by their appearance, they called them hallucigenia, as in hallucinogenic, like hallucinogenic drugs. These things are so weird looking, the scientists basically thought they were tripping out. That's what I'm taking from that story. I'm thinking if normal worms usually creep people out a bit, then a big walking one that looks like it came from a Harry Potter book might be a little bit too much. Moving on to number 7 now we have Androsarcus. Think of a big scary mammal. A lion, a tiger, maybe a bear. Oh my, this thing would eat them for breakfast. Andrew Sarkis lived in what is now China about 45 million years ago. The only known skull of this creature was discovered in Mongolia in 1923. It's now on display in the American Museum of History in New York. It was from only this skull and a few bones that scientists were able to make an accurate construction of what this beast would have looked like. When they finished the model, they were pretty shocked to see that it would have weighed about 4,000 pounds. That would possibly make it the largest land dwelling mammal predator ever. We're talking bigger than all the lions, tigers and bears oh my. If you don't want to step into a ring with any of those animals, well those animals wouldn't want to step into a ring with this thing. Next up at number 6 now we have the pig from hell. I'll admit that's the name I gave it. You'll see why though. This mammal is known as the Entelodon. They lived 37 to 28 million years ago all across Eurasia. If we were around back then we probably would have said they looked like pigs but like really terrifying ones. Despite being on all fours, these things were four and a half feet tall. They were massive. Some scientists say they had a ravaging appetite for meat. These things would eat you, they'd eat me, and if there wasn't any other meat around, they'd end up eating each other. You heard me right. Some people have suggested that entelodonts were actually cannibalistic. They craved meat so much, they'd even eat their own kind. How does that sound to you? Imagine one of these things charging right at you. You wouldn't stand a chance. You better hope they'd eaten their fill for the day or you'd be 
the filling. Next up on number five now, we have the three foot long scorpion. That is the scientific name, just kidding. This is actually Pulmono scorpius. It looks just like modern scorpions. It had the same front claws and sting in its tail. The only difference is this thing was bloody massive. It lived over 300 million years ago during the Carboniferous period, and this helps explain why these things grew so massive. Back then, the oxygen content in Earth's atmosphere was a lot higher. Scientists know that this is one of the key factors in the term determining how big some creatures get. So if you don't like creepy crawlies, just be glad there isn't too much oxygen in the air. We know this creature had venom, like many modern scorpions, but it's difficult to know just how toxic it would have been. One thing's for sure though, you wouldn't want to stick around these things to find out. If modern day scorpions cause problems for us today, imagine these three foot versions running around stinging us. No. Thank you. Moving on to number four now, we have the Smilodon. I absolutely love this one. I remember watching a show as a kid called Walking with Beasts that featured this very animal. Check it out if you haven't heard of it. The Smilodon lived from 2.5 million years ago to just 10,000 years ago. If you recognize the picture on the screen right now, you may know this creature by its much more famous name, the saber-toothed tiger. They were a force to be reckoned with. They had very well-built forelimbs and exceptionally big canine teeth. They spread out all over the world and came in a number of different types. The biggest ones were thought to have weighed up to 880 pounds. You might think, oh, well, I'm glad humans never had to live alongside these beasts. Well, think again, they did. Considering the saber-toothed tiger didn't die out until about 100,000 years ago, they were already modern humans, just like me and you, walking around back then. Many of them got probably eaten by these big cats as they had nothing more than a simple spear to defend themselves. They died so that we could live. I vote that we don't bring them back. Next up at number three now, we have the Terror Bird. That's the nickname given to Forus Racidae, and I think the nickname suits it very well. They were the largest species of apex predators in South America for about 60 million years, starting 62 million years ago. That's a very, very long time. You can't even picture how long these things were the top dogs for. They were huge, standing up to 9.8 feet tall. They were flightless birds too. That's quite strange to think about. About. We usually think of flightless birds as quite harmless, dodos and penguins. Maybe ostriches could give you a good slash, but generally speaking, it's the flying hawks and things that are the scariest. This creature will make you think twice though. The terror birds were big. They weighed up to half a ton. Okay, so maybe that means you can outrun them. Oh no. Probably not. It's thought they could actually run as fast as a cheetah. That's about 75 miles an hour. If you see a terror bird and the terror bird sees you, just give up, accept your fate as it's lunch. Coming at number two now, we have the giant bird. That's my name for it. The real name for this creature is Pelagornis sandersi. It's one of the largest flying birds ever discovered. It lived 25 million years ago during the Oligocene era. This thing was huge. You may think you've seen a big bird in your time, maybe a pigeon or a seagull. Nah, you've not seen a big bird. Look at the size of this. It had a wingspan of up to 24 feet. Its wingspan was bigger than a giraffe is tall. Just try and imagine that. Perhaps fittingly, for one of the largest flying creatures to ever live. The only fossil of it was discovered in 1983 by construction workers at Charleston International Airport, South Carolina. And finally, number one now, we have Quetzalcoatlus. I'm not even sure how to start off with this one. Just look at this thing. This creature was a pterosaur. They lived alongside dinosaurs, but were very much their own thing. The Quetzalcoatlus was one of the largest flying animals of all time. It was toothless, it had a long stiff neck, and was just generally a bit of an oddball. Its wingspan was 52 feet. Remember the massive bird we were talking about just earlier? This creature had a wingspan twice that size. It's hard to even imagine how big this thing was. Ever since its discovery, people have been fascinated by it. It's been featured in documentaries and movies around the world. Perhaps the favorite one that I found is from Clash of the Dinosaurs. We already know that's wrong anyway, but wait till you hear this. The show portrayed them as having ultraviolet vision to locate dinosaur urine while hunting in the air. I'm obviously mocking this, but I do kind of want to watch it. Mm -hmm. 